Let's first consider an object that is doing uniform circular motion. Uniform here means the object's speed is constant. So this object is going around a circle at a constant speed. Do you think it has any acceleration? Remember that the definition for average acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. If the velocity changes, there is acceleration. And the velocity includes speed and direction. Even if the speed does not change, the direction changes for circular motion. So there must be acceleration. Remember how we feel acceleration? When we are in a car, making a fast turn, our bodies will lean outward. We lean in a direction opposite to the direction of acceleration. So if we lean outward, the acceleration must point inward. Remember this styrofoam in water I showed you in the second kinematics video? The styrofoam leans in the same direction as the acceleration. So, You can see that the styrofoam indeed leaned inward, showing you that the acceleration was inward. Now, let's go derive an equation for this acceleration. Suppose we have a mass m doing uniform circular motion around this circle, and we want to find the acceleration when it gets to this location. To find acceleration or instantaneous acceleration, we still need to take average. We just have to take average over a very short amount of time. So the average is delta V over delta T. Since it's a very short amount of time, I'm just going to look at a little bit before to a little bit after. So that's the initial position, that's the final position. When it's at the initial position, its velocity is going that way tangent to the circle, because uh, when the object is over here, it's traveling in that direction. The final velocity would be, again, tangent to the circle that way. Since it's a uniform circular motion, the speed doesn't change. The magnitude of these two should equal. So I'm drawing those two vectors the same length. Now to find the changing velocity, we just have to do the final velocity minus the initial velocity. And uh, to subtract vectors, final minus initial is the same as uh, the final plus the negative of the initial. So I'm copying the vectors down here. The final velocity, I copied that vector to this here. And then the negative initial velocity is this one flipped over pointing that way. So I'm putting this over here. So I started here, v final plus the negative v initial. I'm adding these two vectors tail to tip. And what I get is a vector that starts here and there. So this is the change in velocity. Now let's compare this triangle to this triangle over here. When the radius makes this angle, that means the velocity would turn by the same angle. That means over here, this angle here is the same as that. So this is an isosceles triangle, r, r, and this will be the distance traveled. For this here, speed is the same, so these two are also equal. That means it's an, this one is also an isosceles triangle, and this angle is the same as that. That means these two triangles, they are similar. 
which means the distance traveled during that short amount of time, this length of the arc, which is kind of like the straight side of this triangle. So the distance traveled to the R would equal to this side, delta V, to the side over here. Since they have the same speed, we're just going to use V for the speed. That's the one side here. So distance traveled to R equals to delta V to the speed. Now if you cross multiply and then divide by R on both sides, you can get delta V. When you cross multiply, you're going to get the distance traveled times the velocity and then you divide by R, you get the delta V. So if we plug this delta V into right here, then I'm going to get the acceleration that is uh, delta V is this distance traveled times uh, V divided by delta T times R. So this part is the delta V and then you divide delta V by the time. And uh, what do you think this is? The distance traveled divided by the time and that gives you speed. So this gives us uh, V squared over R. So that is the acceleration when the object is right there. Another thing is, uh, since this acceleration is the delta V over delta T, so that means uh, the acceleration and the change in velocity must be in the same direction. So the acceleration points this, this way, exactly the same as the delta V, and this is uh, towards the center. So this acceleration goes towards the center. So we call it centripetal acceleration. So we have this A sub C equals to V squared over R, and this is called centripetal acceleration. And the centripetal, this word means the center seeking. It just means it's towards the center. The centripetal acceleration always goes towards the center. So this is the equation for the acceleration. Because uh, net force equals to ma. Now if this object has this uh, centripetal acceleration, that, that means uh, there must be a net force to provide this acceleration. And uh, we call this force centripetal force. So this object needs a net force to provide the centripetal force in order to stay in this particular circular motion. For example, if I tie a 0.01 kilogram eraser at the end of a string, and whirl it around in a horizontal circle. The radius of the circle is 0.2 meters. And the speed of the eraser is 3 meters per second. And we want to find the tension in the string. Let's follow our problem solving procedures. Since this object is doing circular motion, that means it has a centripetal acceleration which goes towards the center. So the acceleration goes towards the center. Now let's draw the force diagram. This is a horizontal circle. So this uh, acceleration is horizontal. That means that only horizontal forces can contribute to this acceleration. Now the mg is in the vertical direction it cannot contribute to this acceleration. So we don't have to worry about mg in this case. We just have to look at the horizontal forces. This object is only touching the string and the string's tension is horizontal. So that's it. It's only touching the string, nothing else. So we can write our force equation. The only force 
that's in the horizontal direction is the tension and that equals to MA and this is that special centripetal acceleration which means we can use our new equation for it since the centripetal acceleration is V squared over R the mass is 0 0.01 the speed is 3 the radius is 0 0.2 so this gives us the tension is 0 0.45 newtons so here we have the tension and this tension is the one that's keeping the eraser in circular motion it provides that net force the centripetal force to keep it in circular motion now this means uh, if the string breaks the eraser will lose this tension and will not be able to stay in this circular motion let's say if the string breaks when the object is here which way do you think the eraser is going to go off would it follow this path A would it go off like this B C D or E now this is the top view that's my floor right there here I have a eraser at the end of a string I can whirl it around so that it does a circular motion in this case the tension in the string pulls towards the center to provide the centripetal force to keep it in circular motion but if I let go of the string it loses the tension let's see which way it goes off the moment the eraser loses tension it loses the force that provides the centripetal force to keep it in circular motion in this case the horizontal net force becomes zero so an object in motion would continue to move at constant velocity the moment it loses tension it is doing circular motion along this path it has a velocity tangent to the path so after it loses tension it moves at a constant velocity this way and goes off along the straight path so the answer is C here's a note about centripetal force I guess many of you have heard of centrifugal not centripetal force for example, when you ride in a roller coaster that travels on a horizontal curve, your body would lean outward. This feels like there is a force pushing you outward. This outward force is called centrifugal force. But let's think about it again. Is there really a force pushing or pulling you outward? Is there any non-contact or contact force that's there to push or pull you outward? There is no non-contact force like gravity, electric or magnetic force pushing or pulling you outward. There is no contact surface, string or air resistance providing outward force. There is no force that pushes or pulls you outward it only feels like it centrifugal force is what we call pseudo force there really is no centrifugal force here's another example let's say you are riding on a merry-go-round and you let go of a rock in your hands when you get to this position after you let go of the rock the rock would uh, fly off tangent to the path and you stay on the merry-go-round continue the circular motion when the rock gets to here you would be there when the rock gets to here you are there when the rock is here you're there when the rock is there you're there so when you look at the rock you would see the rock relative to you the rock flies outward 
So it looks to you, the rider, that there is this centrifugal force pulling the rock outward. But there is really no such force. So if an object is doing circular motion, its velocity is tangent to the circle, and its centripetal acceleration equals to v squared over r and goes towards the center. Since the net force equals to ma, if the acceleration is the centripetal acceleration, that means we can call this force the centripetal force. This means that there has to be a towards the center net force to provide the centripetal force to keep the object in circular motion. Although we derived this v squared over r using uniform circular motion, we only used a very small part of a circle. We took average over a very short amount of time. So if the speed should change around the circle, the centripetal acceleration would still be v squared over r. As the speed changes, this v changes, and the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration would change accordingly and this equation will still hold.